Hey everyone, I hope you're doing well. It is Monday, September 26, 2022, and I'm here with a study on the earth. Um, this is something that over the last week or so, um, the Lord's been highlighting many, many things for me and reminding me of some things that he shared with me over the years, um, including a study that I did on the heavens. Um, this was back in, I believe, 2018, which I have uploaded here on my YouTube channel. You're welcome to watch it, and I encourage you to watch it. Um, this is perhaps a continuation of those studies that I shared, um, but this is going to be a little bit heavy. In fact, um, I have been <laughs> reluctant to share this because it is not easy to share. Um, and there is still, this is fresh revelation that the Lord is sharing me, sharing with me, and he began sharing with me last night, specifically and especially, um, after I've been getting a lot of song messages and reminded of song messages. So please bear with me, um, and full and fair warning, this is going to be a heavy study. Um, there are some things that he's already shared with me, uh, that I'm going to be sharing right now um, and the rest is just going to be how he flows and how he leads as most of you know that's how I hear the Holy Spirit and that's how I share most of the time so I've titled this the world thrown upside down a study on the earth shift now uh, this phrase the world thrown upside down is something that was put on my heart when uh, COVID hit in the spring of 2020 um, so there is kind of a correlation to that, I suppose, and sort of the unfolding of everything that's happened since then and continues to happen. And when I'm talking about the earth shift, I am specifically talking about the major event that is going to happen that is prophesied in scripture that I am going to read word for word, and it is found in Isaiah 24. I'm also going to be correlating um, this specific event, cosmic event that's going to happen um, with the Synoptic Gospels of the signs of the end of the age, which are found in Matthew 24, Mark 13, and Luke 21. Um, now, I, wish, I, I suppose I should preface by saying that um, there has been some news recently on this pole shift. Now, what is a pole shift? So a pole shift is basically the north and south pole of the earth swapping places. Now scientists have studied this over the years and part of it is a normal occurrence that happens after so many hundreds of years um, but this is not what I'm speaking about when I'm going to share this. I'm not talking about the natural occurrence that happens um, in the earth cycle. I'm talking about the actual earth shift, pole shift that is going to happen that is prophesied in Isaiah 24. Now, just to get into this a little bit, um, to kind of give us a framework to work with. Um, I'm going to start with the seven layers of the Earth's atmosphere. Um, most of you probably remember this from science class, some of you might not, but there are seven uh, distinct layers of atmosphere. Um, there is the troposphere, which is the one that we as humans can function in, including airplanes and aircraft. Um, there's the stratosphere, the mesosphere, thermosphere and ionosphere, exosphere, and the, magnetos the magnetosphere, uh, which is the region of space that surrounds Earth. Now, back when I shared on um, the heavens, um, I talked about how there are three heavens, okay? So we have the first heaven, which is 
where we are. Um, and I guess you can correlate that to the troposphere. This is the first heaven. The second heaven is what we commonly call outer space. Um, and that would be pretty much the rest of these. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Um, and then the third heaven, which is the heaven, capital H, where God is seated on his throne. And the Lord is seated at the right hand of the Father. So that is the third heaven. Um, now, for many, many decades, uh, we have heard in the news, and many scientists have been talking about the Earth's magnetics, magnetic fields weakening. Um, and why is this important to know? Because it's the magnetic fields around the planet that protect the planet from everything that's outside of it. So basically, um, anything that's going on with the sun, anything that's going on with space weather, which is very important to know about. Um, in fact, that is another area that the Lord's been showing me since 28, so specifically summer of 2018. Um, he was showing me a lot about what was going on with space weather, what was going on and how that correlated to earthquakes. Um, obviously earthquakes can affect, depending on where they are, they can affect the ocean, causing tsunamis, uh, volcanic activity, everything that's going on with space affects volcanoes and volcanic activity. So as you can see, it's a domino effect. So whatever's going on in the second heaven affects us in the first heaven. Um, so... I'm going to read a few quotes from some scientists and some science articles that speak on the pole shift. Okay, um, this one is taken from Popular Mechanics, and it says the magnetic pole just isn't where it used to be. So this is a recent article, and they were speaking specifically on the fact that what they've noticed is it has gone from Canada over to Siberia in terms of its direction. Um, another one from space.com. It started in Canada and is now closer to Siberia at a surprisingly rapid rate. Um, this one was documented last year, I believe. Um, Another one from inverse.com, every 200 to 800 years, they switch. So again, this is a normal occurrence in terms of a normal pole shift. But we're going to get into more than a no normal pole shift. But these are indications um, that something is happening. And it has been happening for a number of years. Um, let's see. This is, again, from this inverse.com uh, article. It says, when Earth's magnetic, magnetic poles flip, it could be chaos for humans. Paleomagnetic records show that the poles have flipped places 183 times in the last 83 million years. It takes between 2,000 to 7,000 years for this to reoccur. Okay, so take that as you will, um, you know, in terms of time frames, because we all have different understandings of how long we've been on Earth, when Earth began. So, but these are scientific documentations of things changing and happening on our planet as it relates to this pole shift. Okay? Um, another phrase. Um, and commonly used phrase is geomagnetic reversal. Um, and one of the things that they have noted is that if and when this occurs, okay, leading up to what we're actually going to get into, okay, because that is the fear. Um, and that is actually the reality. 
but that there would be three distinct and separate poles in both the north and the south, which is very profound to me because as we know, three is a powerful and significant number um, to God and in scripture. Um, he created everything in threes, practically. Um, so, in other words, this pole shift that they're talking about, that the scientists are talking about, would create three distinct poles. In other words, it wouldn't just be north and south. It would be three north poles and three south poles, which would be complete and utter chaos. Okay? So... I'm going to get into first these synoptic gospels in Matthew, Mark, and Luke to kind of preface us getting into Isaiah 24. Uh, many of you know that these are scriptures that talk about the end of the age. Now when it says the end of the age, we are, spe we are specifically talking about the grace age, which is where we are in time before the Lord returns. Um, and there are signs, the Lord says in these passages, there will be signs in the heavens to let us know how close we are. Um, there have been, gosh, I would take forever if I were to sit here and try and remember some of the things that he's been showing me over the years in terms of the signs. Excuse me, I'm sorry, my phone fell in terms of the signs that we've been seeing both in the sun, in the moon, um, in the stars, uh, planets, I mean all of it. So the physical evidence of things changing and changing rapidly has been confirmed by scientists. Um, not only in space and the second heaven but also on our planet. Um, I think I've shared, and I shared specifically in 2018, that so much was happening that summer, so much was happening that year on our planet um, between the volcanic activity and the earthquakes that were happening and what was going on with space weather. It was an uptick it was a significant uptick, actually, um, and many scientists were kind of alerting us that things were changing and they were changing rapidly. So that was uh, 2019, 2020, 2021, 22. So that was four years ago. Um, so we can imagine how much has happened since then for those of us who haven't really been paying attention. Um, but let's get into this. We're going to go to Matthew 24 first. And it is beginning, I'm not going to read the entire passage because um, I've actually already shared this in another video or another few videos, I think. But I encourage you to read it in context. I always encourage when you're reading scripture, read it in context so you can get the full picture. But for this study and for this spe specific video, I'm just going to read the passages that he highlighted to me as I was putting this together. Um, and connect the dots. Now, the other thing I'm going to share, I might even actually share this before I read, if I can find my notebook, because I had my other notebook out here. Um, but last night he was showing me some things um, as it pertained to, and it started with song messages, which I shared about already. Um, but it was in correlation to uh, several things. Um, some of it was what's coming. Some of it had to do with uh, the moon. Some of it had to do with um, the ocean. And... A big chunk of it had to do with uh, this connection to what is going on with Israel as it pertains to Jerusalem and 
uh, the division of Jerusalem. Now, as you guys know, I don't get into narratives. I don't get into. I don't get into narratives because I don't. I don't want to bring that spirit of division. Um, but for those of you who understand Bible prophecy, there is a very clear indication in terms of the Lord's return as it pertains to Israel and what is going on specifically with the city of Jerusalem. Um, there is prophecy in the Bible that talks about when the city of Jerusalem is divided, it will be sudden destruction. Um, now, I have done my studies over the years on Bible prophecy, but I am only going to share what he's asking me to share. Those of you that know more um, and you feel like you want to share and kind of connect more dots, please share that with us because we're all here with puzzle pieces just trying to, to learn more and understand more and give whatever it is that he's asking us to do. Now, again, I'm going to tell you, this has been a Jonah moment for me because it's really heavy. It's not easy to share. I've had a few of these over the years. Um, but I know he's asking me to do this and not wait. Now, another thing I'll share is the fact that we're in the middle of um, the Jewish New Year. So that is very significant. Um, and this year is a very powerful year in terms of time. Um, and in terms of the rhema word that he gave us. So um, that's what I wanted to preface with. But now I'm going to get into Prover uh, Matthew 24. And it is 29 through 31. And it reads, Immediately after the tribulation of those days, the sun will be darkened, and the moon will not give its light. And the stars will fall from the heaven, and the powers of the heavens will be shaken. Then will appear in heaven the sign of the Son of Man. And then all the tribes of the earth will mourn, and they will see the Son of Man coming on the clouds of heaven with power and great glory. He will send out his angels with a loud trumpet call, and they will gather his elect from the four winds, from one end of heaven to the other. Okay, so there's a lot in this passage. Um, I'm going to actually read all three, even though they're very similar. Um, I've shared this before, but when you read these Gospels, um, they seem and they mostly do have a lot of the same um, account, but there are some specific things that are different, so it's important to read them all and compare them um, because that is how you glean and how you gain more revelation and understanding. So for that purpose, I am going to read all three. Uh, so we are now we're going to Mark 13. And this one is 24 through 27. It reads, But in those days, after the tribulation, the sun will be darkened, and the moon will not give its light. And the stars will be falling from heaven, and the powers in the heavens will be shaken. And then they will see the Son of Man coming in clouds with great power and glory. And then he will send out the angels and gather his elect from the four winds, from the ends of the earth to the ends of the heaven. Okay, now I'm going over to Mark, um, sorry, Luke 21, 25 through 27. And it reads, and there will be signs in sun and moon and stars and on the earth distress of nations in perplexity because of the roaring of the sea and the waves. People fainting with fear and with foreboding of what is coming on the world for the powers of the heavens will be shaken, and then they will see the Son of Man coming in a cloud with power and great glory. Now when these things begin to take place, straighten up and raise your heads because your redemption is drawing near. Okay, so as you can see, um, each one of these passages is giving the same account, but we see here in this one that there is more detail. Um, and there is also a quick 
correlation with the C that we didn't see in the other ones. Now, I'm going to camp here because um, just yesterday he reminded me of a dream that I had through a song message. And actually, I had the dream with the song message. And it had to do with the seas rising. Now, I had this dream many, many years ago. Um, now, again, we have to remember that we never get the full picture. Okay, the Lord gives us dreams um, for the purpose of getting the revelation and the understanding and sharing it because everybody has a puzzle piece um, so that we can learn and we can remember to be sober-minded and vigilant and prepared for the days that we're in. Um, but this specific time frame um, is connected to the coming of the Lord, okay? Now, again, to prevent any kind of divisiveness, um, I'm not going to get into um, the timeline specifically for this video in terms of when the Lord returns, um, in terms of you know, the rapture saints and the tribulation saints. I've actually shared on that already, and I've shared on that on my blog. So you're welcome to read that. Um, but what I will say is that there is a direct correlation and connection between this cosmic event that is going to, as it says, it is going to bring distress of nations, and perplexity because of the roaring of the sea and the waves. So, again, this connection between what is going on in space affecting what is going on on planet Earth. Okay, and there is uh, the science that confirms this because as we know, um, and maybe you don't know, but as I mentioned earlier, what is going on in space weather, because there is space weather, what is going on, on up there directly affects us. Um, and so when there are CMEs, uh, which are, it's, it's, it's a acronym for coronal mass ejection, which is basically the sun releasing um, a powerful um, gas into the Earth's realm and atmosphere. Um, that can cause uh, pl problems with satellites. It can cause earthquakes. I mean, so now, again, we know that earthquakes can create tsunamis if they are taking place in the ocean or, or somewhere near the ocean, even not even on the ocean sometimes. Um, so there is going to be a cosmic event that is going to happen right before the Lord's return. Now, we don't know when this is going to happen. Scientists don't know when this is going to happen, but it is going to happen. Um, so I'm going to head over to Isaiah 24. Um, and actually, I'm reminded of other scriptures as, even as I was reading that. So I'll probably turn there as I'm led. But I'm going to go to this specific and foundational text that he reminded me of. And I'm going to read it in its entirety. And then I'm just going to camp wherever I feel led. Okay. Again, I know this is heavy. Um, it is daunting to think about. Um, and certainly... I don't think any of us can really process this uh, in a state of peace without the Holy Spirit giving us that peace. Um, but it is something that we need to be cognizant of because, as we know, things are changing and they're changing rapidly. And it's important for us to be prepared as best as we can. 
Um, and as many of you know, I've shared on the importance of being wherever God has called you to be because um, we need to be ready to help others when the time comes. Okay? So, Isaiah 24. Judgment on the whole earth. Behold, the Lord will empty the earth and make it desolate. And he will twist its surface and scatter its inhabitants. And it shall be as with the people, so with the priest, as with the slave, so with his master. As with the maid, so with her mistress. As with the buyer, so with the seller. As with the lender, so with the borrower. As with the creditor, so with the debtor. The earth shall be utterly empty and utterly plundered. For the Lord has spoken his word. For the Lord has spoken this word. The earth mourns and withers. The world languishes and withers. The highest people of the earth languish. The earth lies defiled under its inhabitants. For they have transgressed the laws, violated the statutes, broken the everlasting covenant. Therefore, a curse devours the earth, and its inhabitants suffer for their guilt. Therefore, the inhabitants of the earth are scorched, and men are left and few men are left. The wine mourns, the vine language languishes, all the merry-hearted sigh. The mirth of the tambourines is stilled. The noise of the jubilant has ceased. The mirth of the lyre is stilled. No more do they drink wine with singing. Strong drink is bitter to those who drink it. The wasted city is broken down. Every house is shut up so that none can enter. There is an outcry in the streets for lack of wine. All joy has grown dark. The gladness of the earth is banished. Desolation is left in the city. The gates are battered into ruins. For thus it shall be in the midst of the earth among the nations. And when an olive tree is beaten, as at the gleaning when the, when the grape harvest is done, they lift up their voices, they sing for joy, over the majesty of the Lord they shout from the west. Therefore in the east give glory to the Lord, in the coastlands of the sea give glory to the name of the Lord, the God of Israel. From the ends of the earth we hear songs of praise, of glory to the righteous one. But I say, I waste away, I waste away, woe is me, for the traitors have betrayed with betrayal the traitors have betrayed. Terror and the pit and the snare are upon you, O inhabitant of the earth. He who flees at the sound of the terror shall fall into the pit, and he who climbs out of the pit shall be caught in the snare. For the windows of heaven are opened, and the foundations of the earth tremble. The earth is utterly broken, the earth is split apart. The earth is violently shaken. The earth staggers like a drunken man. It sways like a hut. Its transgression lies heavy upon it. And it falls and will not rise again. On that day the Lord will punish the host of heaven in heaven. And the kings of the earth and on the earth. They will be gathered together as prisoners in a pit. They will be shut up in a prison, and after many days they will be punished. Then the moon will be confounded and the sun ashamed. For the Lord of hosts reigns on Mount Zion and in Jerusalem, and his glory will be before his elders.
Sorry, I gotta keep going. Um, this is a lot to take in. Um, I'm gonna go to Joel. Uh, Joel chapter 2. This is actually a passage that the Lord highlighted for, highlighted for me in 2014 when he was beginning to show me um, these things. This is... Um, Joel chapter 2 is the day of the Lord. Now, the day of the Lord, um, in my studies, uh, and please feel free to share what you've learned, but in my studies, uh, the day of the Lord is a multi-faceted event. Um, there are many things that will happen during this time of the day of the Lord, the Lord returning. Um, however, obviously there is an actual day that he will come back. Um, this passage in Joel chapter 2 is a word of preparation and a word of warning. Um, and again, I encourage you to read the entire thing. But for this study, I'm actually just going to skip around to the parts that are connected to what we're studying right now. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to read is verse 1 um, and 2. Blow a trumpet in Zion, sound an alarm on my holy mountain. Let all the inhabitants of the land tremble, for the day of the Lord is coming, it is near. A day of darkness and gloom, a day of clouds and thick darkness. Like blackness there is spread upon the mountains, a great and powerful people. Their like has never been before, nor will be again after them through the years of all generations. Um, now I'm going to drop down to verse 10, and it reads, The earth quakes before them, the heavens tremble, the sun and the moon are darkened, and the stars withdraw their shining. The Lord utters his voice before his army, for his camp is exceedingly great. He who execute his word is powerful, for the day of the Lord is great and very awesome. Who can endure it? Okay, I'm going to see if there's anything else. Okay, I think that's all. I'm jumping over to Daniel for a second. The book of Daniel. Okay, actually I'm being led to 1st Peter, or that might be 2nd Peter. Yes, it's 2nd Peter, and I'm going to read the whole thing. So, um, what I'm doing here is connecting some dots, specifically in relation to the sun and the moon. Um, now, I will share that... Um, I shared a post, uh, this is on my blog, uh, some years back on this understanding as to why 
the, the moon will turn blood red and the sun will go dark. Okay, and I'm going to come back to that in a minute. But I'm going to read this first. The day of the Lord will come. Now this is Second Peter chapter 3. Now this is, this is now the second letter that I am writing to you, beloved. In both of them I am stirring up your sincere mind by way of reminder that you should remember the predictions of the holy prophets and the commandment of the Lord and Savior through your apostles. Knowing this, first of all, that scoffers will come in the last days with scoffing, following their own sinful desires. They will say, where is the promise of his coming? For ever since the fathers fell asleep, all things are continuing as they were from the beginning of creation. For they deliberately overlook this fact that the heavens existed long ago and the earth was formed out of water and through water by the word of God. And that by means of these, the world that then existed was deluged with water and perished. But by the same word, the heavens and earth that now exist are stored up for fire, being kept until the day of judgment and destruction of the ungodly. But don't overlook this one fact, beloved, that with the Lord one day is as a thousand years, and a thousand years is one day. The Lord is not slow to fulfill his promise as some count slowness, but is patient toward you, not wishing that any should perish, but that all should reach repentance. But the day of the Lord will come like a thief, and then the heavens will pass away with a roar, and the heavenly bodies will be burned up and dissolved, and the earth and the works that are done on it will be exposed. Since all these things are thus to be dissolved, what sort of people ought you to be in lives of holiness and godliness, waiting for hastening, waiting for and hastening the coming of the day of God, because of which the heavens will be set on fire and dissolved, and the heavenly bodies will melt as they burn. But according to his promise, we are waiting for a new heavens and a new earth in which righteousness dwells. <laughs> That's so beautiful. Um, but yes, there's going to be a new heaven and a new earth. Um, and that is the hope that we have. Um, but before this, um, this will happen. Now, I'm going to come back here because um, this is confirming that this cosmic event is going to be the end of our planet before God restores it to its original beauty and the original paradise that he had in mind for our planet um, so I'm coming back to verse 5 actually verse 7 by the same word the heavens and earth that now exist are stored up for fire being kept until the day of judgment and destruction of the ungodly. Okay, so stored up for fire, meaning that... Now, this... What he's talking about here is he's correlating um, Noah and the flood, which we know that the earth was deluged with a flood. It literally wiped out humanity, and there was one man and his family that was spared in the ark and animals obviously basically uh, two of every kind of animal um, and uh, a pure humanity now what happened at that time for those of you that, that don't know but what happened at that time was that the Nephilim were on the earth, which are basically uh, fallen angels. 
Um, and they were mating with humanity and creating um, a perversion and a mutated version of humanity. So um, that was wiped out during the flood. And that is why uh, he, in, a sense, in essence, continued the lineage of humanity through Noah. Um, so when he's saying the earth before was deluged with water, that is what he's talking about. But where we are is fire. Now, when I think of fire, I've shared this before, but when I think of fire, I think of fire from the sky, uh, which are, to me, meteors, asteroids, um, obviously falling stars, and I think of volcanic activity. I think of fire from the earth itself and pouring out into planet earth. Um, I'm going to keep going. Um, Verse 10, but the day of the Lord will come like a thief and then the heavens will pass away with a roar and the heavenly bodies will be burned up and dissolved and the earth and the works that are done on it will be exposed. Okay, so this is what this is coming to. Why is this happening? This is happening because of the sin and corruption, the same thing. And, and there's actually a scripture that says this, as it was in the days of Noah, so it will be in the coming of the Son of Man. So because sin and corruption was consuming humanity, it was consuming the earth. Now that's another thing that we don't necessarily always think about is the fact that um, our earth's decay um, and condition um, has everything to do with us. Because when God originally created humanity, he created us to care for what he gave us, which was paradise. We had, you know, it was Adam and Eve in the Garden of Eden, but we were here, we were created to cultivate the earth. We were here to take care of it. Um, and all of us have been guilty of not taking care of our planet. I'm sure you could sit there and think about how you haven't taken care of our planet. But the point is that we are all guilty of not cultivating and caring for this beautiful planet that God has given to us. Um, now, the curse of sin has been consuming our planet, and that is the root of all of it. That is something that we cannot control or do anything about because it happened long before any of us were here. Um, but because we are still in this cycle of decay and destruction, in a very real sense, it has to play out until God restores it when the Lord returns. When the Lord returns, he's going to reconcile all things to himself, meaning he is going to bring. Um, he is going to bring obviously the recompense for what has happened, but he's also going to bring redemption and restoration, both for humanity and for our planet. Okay, so I mean, it's bigger than any of us can fully fathom and and understand, but that is in essence what it means and what what this what all of this is leading up to um but this specific cosmic event that is prophesied in isaiah 24 is um and has been highlighted to me again um i'm sorry about my voice but i've i've had a long day and i've been crying today um so please bear with me but um, how do we prepare for this is the question. Um, now, the other thing to remember is we don't necessarily know when this is going to happen um, because just as we don't know when the Lord returns, it's going to be a mystery in terms of when it happens. But what's not a mystery is the fact that there are many signs in the heavens 
Um, and there are many signs that even the scientists are confirming that are happening and they're happening rapidly and quickly, which needs to wake us up and put us at attention and alert that we need to be prepared as best as we can. Now, this is where uh, you come to understand why are you here? What has God called you to do while you're here? Because our life is not um, random. Um, the gifts that he's given to us are not random. Um, we all have something that we can give to others. However, you can do that in whatever capacity you can do that. Um, and all the more as things continue to get more chaotic and worsen. The other aspect and very important highlight that he has been showing me since 2020 is to be wherever he's calling you to be. Now that is obviously a spiritual because that needs to be um, that needs to be sound. You need to be sound in your spirit first because you can't get guidance and direction from God if you are not connected to him. Um, uh, you need to know you need to be where he wants you to be mentally, emotionally, and obviously physically, because that is a huge factor. Um, if he tells you to get up and move, I would strongly encourage you to do it in spite of... Um, and this is where faith comes in, because radical faith is taking God at his word and doing what he says in spite of how I feel about it, uh, the practicality of it at times. Um because we're not in the time of brushing things off anymore. In fact, I shared this, I think I shared this in 2020, that 2020 was sort of the wake-up call year for humanity. Because what, what happened was global, um, and it was going to be a domino effect, which clearly we have seen in the last two years. Um... And the, the lockdown, I remember sharing this uh, because I shared this on Instagram, but the lockdown was actually a gift of time to get right with God if you weren't so that you can know where he wants you to be. Last year um, was alignment. Last year was divine alignment. And that was the word he gave me, meaning that um, he was spiritually there was a spiritual division that happened um, in terms of people God was connecting people by spirit and he was dividing people by spirit according to spirit um, and this year has been uh, the year that love and honor is being unveiled to us and we are in the, the fourth quarter of this year. Um, but why is that? Because God is trying to bring his uh, essence and character to his people so that they can demonstrate it to others. Um, and love and honor is who he is. He is love and he is honor. Um, so I have videos on all that, but all that to say that um, the best way we can be prepared for this event whenever it takes place and anything that is coming before leading up to this event, um, and I speak specifically on natural disasters and uh, cosmic events that will lead up to this, is to be where he wants you to be um, and to be living in the calling that he's given to you um, however that needs to look, however that looks. Um, and obviously, the most important thing, which is loving one another. Because that is the mark of his people, is to love and to forgive. Um, so, this is, I think this is all I'm um, to share. Um, actually, there's one more thing. I was going to share about why 
why would and I have a I have a blog on this I might link it on this video but uh, because I remember when I was studying a few years back, I said, Lord, why why would you turn the moon blood red? And why are you turning the sun dark, like black, actually? In fact, I want to find that scripture if I can. Um, there is a scripture that actually says the sun will turn black. And for right now, I can't seem to remember where it is. So I'm going to see if I can just word search it real quick. S-U-N. I think it might be Amos. Let me check. Please bear with me because I I'm trying to remember where I saw this verse because I studied it some years ago. Well, there's a verse here in Amos eight, ten or nine. And on that day declares the Lord God, I will make the sun go down at noon and darken the earth in broad daylight. I will turn your feast into mourning and all your songs into lamentation. I will bring sackcloth on every waist and baldness on every head. I will make it like the morning of an only son and the end of it like a bitter day. Now, obviously, he's t he's talking about, um, again, the coming of the Lord. But what the Lord, if I remember correctly, what he was showing me when I did that study was the red... And this is, this is a very powerful and heavy thing to take in, okay? And actually, let me rewind a minute. When he created... The sun... In fact, I'm going to read it now. Genesis. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. The earth was without form and void, and darkness was over the face of the deep. And the Spirit of God was hovering over the face of the waters. And God said, Let there be light. And there was light. And God saw that the light was good. And God separated the light from the darkness God called the light day, and the darkness he called night. And there was evening, and there was morning the first day. Okay, so the first words that God ever spoke was, let there be light. Okay, verse 6, And God said, let there be an expanse in the midst of the waters, and let it separate the waters from the waters. Okay? So, here, expanse is space. Let there be an expanse. Let there be spa a space. In the midst of the waters. Okay? And God made the expanse and separated the waters that were under the expanse from the waters that were above the expanse. And it was so. And God called the expanse heaven. And there was evening and there was morning the second day. So the second day he created the heavens. Okay? Specifically heaven. Um, I'm going to keep going. And God said, Let the waters under the heavens be gathered together in one place into one place and let the dry land appear and it was so so there's waters 
And there's waters above the, the heavens, and there's waters below the heavens when he created this expanse. Now, on the third day, um, okay, on the third day, God called the dry land earth, okay? So these waters that he's forming with the dry land is our planet, planet earth. Okay, um, we're going to verse 10. God called the dry land earth and the waters that were gathered together, he called seas. And God saw that it was good. And God said, let the earth sprout vegetation, plants, yielding seed and fruit, trees bearing fruit, in which is their seed, each according to its kind on the earth. And it was so. The earth brought forth vegetation, plants yielding seed according to their own kinds, and trees bearing fruit in which is their seed, each according to its kind. And God saw that it was good. And there was evening and there was morning the third day. So on the third day is when God created our planet. Okay? We're going to keep going. And God said, Let there be lights in the expanse of the heavens to separate the day from the night. And let them be for signs and for seasons and for days and years. And let them be lights in the expanse of the heavens and give light upon the earth. And it was so. And God made the two great lights, the greater light to rule the day and the lesser light to rule the night and the stars. And God set them in the expanse of the heavens to give light on the earth, to rule over the day and over the night and to separate the light from the darkness. And God saw that it was good and there was evening and there was morning the fourth day. Okay, so we know the greater light is the sun and the lesser light is the moon. Um, what's amazing to me is that he created this, this beautiful and one of my favorite things about creation on the fourth day. And four is the number of earth. Um, now, God created... these for signs, for seasons, for days, and for years. So again, the sun and the moon, which we read about, um, were given to us to help us understand time.